Chapter 1. Information overload has left us in a state of constant agitation. Today, most of us are frazzled. We are stuck in a state of extreme physical and mental fatigue and agitation. Constant stress is overloading our nervous system, flooding it with adrenaline and cortisol. Rather than live in the here and now, we worry about tomorrow and fixate on the mistakes we've made in the past. We compare our lives to that of others and try to keep up with the Joneses. We live from task to task and even try to do two or three things together at once, which only leaves us burned out. As fast as we can, we tunnel our way through life on autopilot to get our stuff done and neatly put away in drawers. Despite living in one of the most successful and peaceful eras in human history, we're constantly creating stress for ourselves where there is none. Why don't we enjoy the fact that, unlike our primitive ancestors, we can live to a very ripe age and not spend every day watching our backs for predators? Apart from all the distractions around us, each of us produces an average of 100,000 words daily just communicating with friends. This information overload comes at a cost. Trying to figure out what we need and what is trivial is downright exhausting. When our computers overload, we know to switch them off and boot them up again a bit later. Why can't we do that with ourselves without feeling like a failure? Ruby Wax It's time we got ourselves out of this rut of constant agitation and started cultivating mindfulness. In the following sections of this summary, we will take a detailed look at Ruby Wax's renowned 6 weeks mindfulness training program. Each week has specific exercises to help you learn the how-to of the art of mindfulness. At the end of the training, you will notice when your mind starts wandering and bring it back to a state of calm and clarity allowing you to make better decisions and live in the here and now. Chapter 2. Mindfulness is about being able to stand back and watch your thoughts with no judgment. Mindfulness, according to Ruby Wax, is simply a means of exercising your ability to pay attention. It's a way to quiet the critical thoughts in your head by bringing focus to something on the inside. My definition of mindfulness is noticing your thoughts and feelings without kicking your own ass while you're doing it. Ruby Wax. When you put yourself on the sidelines and observe your thoughts, they lose their hold on you, and you start to realize that you are not your thoughts. By merely watching your thoughts and holding back the urge to act on them, you'll notice that they keep moving, coming, and going of their own will. Mindfulness gives you an awareness of your own thought processes by strengthening your inner observer, just like watching yourself in a dream and being completely aware that you're dreaming. To better understand your thoughts, imagine your mind is a bottle of clear water with sand at the bottom. When it's disturbed by thoughts or feelings, it's as if the bottle has been shaken up. The sand scatters and the bottle is now cloudy. The sand settles when you hold the bottle still. Similarly, your mind settles when you observe thoughts instead of reacting to them. In essence, by practicing mindfulness, you develop your ability to accept things the way they are without trying to change them. As an observer, you witness the good, the bad, and the ugly without judgment. Did you know? Trying to think your way out of an emotional problem is futile. The more you try to understand why you feel the way you feel, the worse things get. Chapter 3. Gaining control of your attention is the key to happiness and peace of mind. As with any skill, mastering the art of mindfulness requires constant practice. Each time you are being mindful, an area in your brain that corresponds with your ability to pay attention develops. Your thinking mind will try to wander off and distract you, but if you can keep focus, the benefits are psychological, neurological, and biological. If you want to be happy, learn how to pay attention. Ruby Wax Having complete control of your attention is essential to living a better, happier, and healthier life because it means you can now control your brain instead of being run ragged by it. Attention is like a muscle. The more you use it, the bigger and stronger it becomes. This is why it's important that you practice mindfulness as often as possible. Once you've mastered the art of controlling your attention, you'll be able to make the right decisions, even in the midst of all the emotional turmoil of everyday life. Humans are multifaceted. We never know which facet of our personalities will surface. In certain situations, for instance, you may be shy and blushy. In others, agile and outspoken. When your mind is decluttered, you will be able to access the numerous sides of you. As you learn to be mindful, you will become more aware of which particular role you're playing at the moment and then decide if you want to continue in that role or change it. Essentially, we're the designer and the object being designed with regard to our brains and therefore our identities. Chapter 4. Notice when your mind goes on autopilot and realign your focus without judging yourself. Now that you know all about the benefits of paying attention, it's time to take a closer look at how it can be done. For this and consequent chapters, you will need to get a journal to put your reflections in writing. Throughout the course, endeavor to write at least a few lines in your diary every day. Being present is an experience that can't be understood logically. You can only feel it through your senses. The first week of Ruby Wax's mindfulness training course is about noticing and waking up. The main exercise for this week is taste. Here's how you go about it. Find something you like to eat, chocolate, cake, fruit, meatball, etc., and cut it into bite-sized pieces. Place a piece of it in the palm of your hand and focus on it as if you've seen nothing like it before. Pay attention to the edges, shape, and color. Slowly track the internal feeling as you lift your arm to pick up the object on your hand and put it on your tongue. When the morsel gets into your mouth, notice the weight, shape, and taste. After a couple of minutes, chew slowly while thinking about what sweetness or bitterness tastes like, and then swallow with awareness. As you do the exercise, have these questions in mind. How is this experience different from your usual eating habit? What did you notice about the sensations of texture, taste, chewing, swallowing? 
When you lost your focus on the taste, where did your mind wander? Write down your reflections in your journal. To practice this exercise throughout the week, choose an activity you do regularly every day, such as brushing your teeth or having breakfast. And for a few minutes while you're at it, try to feel every sensation. Chapter 5. Calm your mind by shifting focus to your breathing. The primary aim of the first week's exercise, as discussed previously, is to help you begin to notice the difference between the thinking and the sensing minds. The activity you'll be doing for the second week will help you learn how to switch focus between the two. In this exercise, you will focus on sound and breath, using them as an anchor. Intentionality births mindfulness. Making a conscious effort to shift your focus immediately puts you in the present. Sit upright in your chair with your spine as straight as possible. Don't be rigid. With the top of your head pointing to the sky, ground yourself by moving your attention to the soles of both feet at their point of contact with the ground. Next, move your attention to the points at which your body touches the chair. Then, let go of those sensations after a moment. Now, shift your attention to sounds around you, trying to focus on the different pitches, tones, and volume. After a while, your mind might start to drift, or you find yourself judging whether you like the sounds you're hearing or not. When this happens, notice and gently guide your attention back to the sounds. Now focus on your breathing. Fixate your attention on a specific area. The nose, back of the throat, chest, or abdomen. Whichever feels the most comfortable. If it's the nose, for instance, try to feel the inward movement of cool air and outward movement of warmer air. In as much detail as you can, feel the expansion and contraction of your chest. Notice what happens in between breathing in and breathing out. Ponder the following questions and answer them in your journal. How was this different from your routine breathing and listening? Which did you find most challenging, focusing on the sound or your breath? Do you remember where your mind went when it drifted? Was it past or future thinking, or was it just blank? Wherever you are, when you notice that your mind is agitated or scattered, you can always refocus on your breathing as an anchor. Ruby Wax Practice this exercise for about 10 to 20 minutes every evening for the next 6 days. Before starting the exercise each day, commit to a set time and stick to it. This is the essence of mindfulness. Chapter 6. Explore the connection between your brain and your body by practicing mindful movements. The third week's exercise is about mindful movement. It aims to help you become aware of your bodily senses and understand that they are reflections of your thoughts. The body can be a wonderful barometer that gives us an honest picture of who we really are, not who we think we are. Mindful movement helps you tune into every part of your body so that you're aware of any tension or resistance and notice when the mind tries to distract you and generate more tension with its incessant criticisms. The side stretch exercise is one of the best ways to practice mindful movement. Here's how you go about it. Focus all the sensations in both your arms as you raise them above your head, palms facing each other. Bring your attention to the feeling of your weight as you lift them. With your arms parallel at either side of your head, gently bend from your waist to the right. Bend far enough so that you can sense the stretch but don't go beyond your limit. With your arms still above your head, return to an upright position and lean your body to the left. Feel the pinch of your waist on the left and the long stretch along the right. Return to upright again and lower your arms to your sides. Release your focus as you feel the effect of the stretch. Repeat the exercise twice on each side. The movements in this exercise will help you learn to use your body as an anchor. Something you can return to when your mind decides to go on a rampage. Stretching will make your body feel relaxed and less constrained by your muscles. As you stretch, your body and your mind free up. Do the side stretch exercise for 10 to 20 minutes daily for 6 days. The more you move, the more blood flows to your organs and the more oxygen gets delivered to your brain. Remember, a rigid body is a rigid mind. Chapter 7. Cultivating awareness of your feelings and emotions rids you of negativity. Now that you've sent the focus of your attention to sounds, body, and breathing, it's time to send it to where you feel emotions in your body. The primary aim here is to get comfortable with moving toward your feelings rather than away from them. The harder you try to avoid your feelings, the harder they'll attack you, and the longer they stick around. Cultivating pure awareness of your emotions takes you beyond negative self-talk. The earlier you hone in on the feeling, the easier it is for you to nip the verbal translation in the bud. The idea is to contain the fire before it catches. The mindful emotions exercise is a great tool for fostering awareness of your feelings. While seated, lean forward in your chair with your spine straight and the crown of your head pointing to the sky, and bring your attention to your feet. After a moment, let that go, and bring focus to your breath. Do not force it. Allow the breath to happen on its own. To make things easier, you can count 10 breaths. Now broaden your focus so you can capture any emotional sensation in your body that might be drawing your attention. When you found the area, zoom in and analyze it without being judgmental. What shape is it? Is it pulsing, throbbing, stabbing, or tickling? What color is it? Practice this exercise for 5 to 10 minutes. Over the next six days, keep a diary by jotting down your mindful feelings. Chapter 8. Mindful Thinking. Keep up with the state of your mind by observing your thoughts regularly. The fifth week of the mindfulness course is about observing your thoughts with a clearer, more settled mind. Mindful thinking. Just like you learn to deal with your fiery emotions and feelings by standing back from them, you can learn to do the same for your thoughts. For this stage of the mindfulness program, you will be acting as your own therapist. Just like a shrink who brings no judgment to the table, you will listen to your own deep, dark thoughts with no criticism. 
One thing about the human mind is that if it feels safe and secure, it will reveal to you who you really are. Once you know your true self, you can then unchain yourself from any limiting beliefs and thoughts you might have discovered and create new ones. If you don't look inward and cultivate an awareness of your thoughts, you will be trapped in habits and keep playing the same old tune. Here is how you do the mindful thinking exercise. Sitting upright and unsupported on a chair or cushion, balance your head on top of your spine. Bring your focus to the feeling of your feet on the ground and the weight of your body on the seat. Pay attention to your breath and expand your awareness to sound. Don't hunt for the sound, just listen and let it come to you. Now bring focus to your thinking. Watch whatever comes up, just as you let sound come to you. If you wish, you can picture these thoughts as clouds of different intensities continuously moving across the sky and changing with absolutely no effort on your part. You can also imagine that you're sitting alone in a theater watching a movie and the actors are voicing your thoughts. You're just sitting, watching without comments or judgment. In the last few minutes of the exercise, come back to simply breathing. Every time you remember to breathe or calmly sit back in your chair in the cinema without interfering with what's on screen, you're automatically in the here and now. The breath is an ever-present tool that brings you back to a sense of peace and presence. Ruby Wax. Practice the mindful thinking exercise for 10 minutes every day for the next 6 days. After each meditation, every day, write down your thoughts in your journal. Chapter 9. Live fully in the moment by incorporating mindfulness into your daily activities. For the sixth and final week, you will work on incorporating mindfulness into your daily life. The truth is, you can't be present all the time, watching your feelings and thoughts. Sometimes you simply have to be on autopilot. However, there are specific times throughout your day when mindfulness will come in handy. Here is a typical day in the life of a working person. 7 a.m., alarm clock goes off. Do a 5-10 to 10 minute mindfulness session. You can do any of the exercises we've discussed. If you have no time to spare, take a shower or brush your teeth with awareness. 8 a.m., while having your breakfast, experience the temperature, flavor, size, or taste of what you're eating or drinking. What's the flavor, texture, and taste? 8.30 a.m. If you drive to work, this is a perfect time to be on autopilot. Don't try to focus on your senses while driving. If you are taking a bus, train, or taxi, however, try to do some mindfulness practice. You can simply shift your attention to the feel of your body on the seat and focus on your breath. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If at any time during the monitoring you notice yourself getting a brain clog, do a 2-3 to three minute mindfulness exercise at your desk. With a clear mind, you will be more creative, more energized, and you will have an incredibly productive day. 1 p.m., lunchtime. Wherever you're eating, mindfully taste the food while you're chewing and swallowing it, even if it's only for a few seconds. 4 p.m., taking a two- or three-minute mindfulness pause at this time of the day will be of tremendous benefit to your brain and body. 7 p.m., it's time to change yourself from the work mode you to the person who communicates with people and genuinely listens to them. So before you see your family, do a little mindfulness practice to avoid bringing home any rubbish from work. 8 p.m. and onwards. If you've had regular mindfulness practices, it will become easier to transition from your working day in the company of your loved ones. 11 p.m. In bed, a three-minute mindfulness practice might help you to fall asleep more quickly. Focus on your breath as you drift to sleep. Conclusion In our world today, we are bombarded with tons of information on a daily basis. The cost of this information is that we find it hard to figure out what we need and what is trivial. Our brains are so crammed up, it's tough to make rational decisions. Should I worry about the ice shelves melting in Antarctica or about getting the right shampoo? The human brain isn't an electronic device that needs charging. It's an organ that needs rest. And for most of us in this generation, rest is a luxury we cannot afford. Rather than get adequate rest, we pump ourselves full of caffeine every day and overwork ourselves. This is why most people simply phase through life without really experiencing the joys of it. It's time to wake up and heed the signals that our minds and bodies are giving us. Slow down sometimes and enjoy the beauty of life. Instead of simply finishing the next task on the list, believing that we'll start living when it's done, our aim should be to evolve towards living a peaceful life. Living every day with mindfulness and heightening awareness is the key to a happy, healthy, and fulfilled life. Mindfulness gives you tranquility and a sound mind. When you are mindful, you accept things the way they are. Instead of worrying about every thought that pops in your head, you merely observe them without judgment and let them come and go as they please. And by being a passive spectator of your thoughts and feelings, you gain total control of your attention and start to live fully in the here and now. Try this. Practice all the mindfulness exercises highlighted in the summary regularly and incorporate them into your daily activities. Whenever you find your mind going on a rampage, return it to a state of calm and clarity by bringing focus to whatever it is you're doing at that moment. Remember, the only way we can truly experience life is by being present in the moment, not by contemplating the future or reminiscing about the past.